Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be playing an MMORPG called DC Universe Online. This game was released in 2011 and is available free to play on Steam. So I've heard a lot of good things about this game, especially with the transmog system, so I'm quite interested in checking it out. So this is the starting screen, you just get to straight off the bat select male or female. Obviously going to be a male. Inspired by. So your superhero can be inspired by different superheroes in the DC Universe. You've got Batman, Superman, Catwoman, Lex Luthor. I think I'd rather just make my own. I think I want to be a hero. Let's just go with a, a flirty personality. So you select a mentor, okay. Let's go with Batman. So in terms of power, I think this is how you select your class. You've got nature, sorcery, mental, ice, fire, gadgets, light, electricity, earth, quantum, celestial, rage, and... Mutition. Munitions. I want to go with fire because fire is always cool. Select movement. I think acrobatics could probably be the most fun, although flight sounds really cool. One-handed. Staff. Dual wield. Two-handed. Martial arts. Dual pistol. Bow. Brawling. Rifle shield. There's a lot of options when it comes to creating your class. This is awesome. You really do get to create your own superhero. That one looks really kinky and it's supposed to be Metalhead. Too kinky for me. This customization is absolutely insane. Yes. Super Pe Are you fucking kidding me? Who's taken the name Super Peon? Oh my god. Stop stealing my names, internet. Let's call him Fire Peon because my main super ability is fire. So the basic story of this game is this douchebag called Brainiac is coming to conquer the Earth. And Lex Luthor comes from the future and releases these nano things in the atmosphere which um, will turn normal humans into superheroes. So we can prepare for the invasion and basically stop it. So that's the basic backstory. There's got to be a windowed borderless mode, please. So right off the bat there's a concern for me that there is no windowed borderless mode. This is a nightmare if you have two monitors. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of options when it comes to video and graphics. Very poor amount of options. V-Sync off. Just for anyone that wants to try this game out on PC, first thing you want to do, turn the V-Sync off. I went from 30 frames per second to about 200 frames per second. Fucking turn that off. So after looking through the settings, there doesn't seem to be a lot of options at all. And there's no windowed borderless mode, which is annoying. And I can't seem to reduce the size of this UI. So we're just going to have to play it like this. But at least I can get over 30 frames per second. So the movement doesn't feel very convincing. I'm probably going to let it slide in this game because it's a superhero game. Combat feels pretty cool though. Subject has left the Wall running hype. Voice. The main thing that's bothering me with this UI is I haven't found a way to make it smaller. So the resolution of the actual UI itself looks really bad. The combat feels decent considering this game was released Bullshit. in 2011 before action RPGs were really a thing. Absolutely tearing it up. It's a bit of a clusterfuck. I like that you get little combo numbers as you're fighting. I'm a superhero motherfucker. Level three. So you hold shift, W to dodge forward, S to dodge backwards, D to that way, and A to go this way. That's how you dodge. We figured it out. Cool little intro fight, to be honest. Superman boys, those combos, yo. And so many achievements. Achievements left, right, and center. Oh, this is just a recap of uh, the actual story. Headline complete. It's a big, scary world out there. That guy looks fucking awesome. Bit fat, though. Boobs! This actually spooked me for a minute. I thought this might have been like a little interface for the in-game store. $249. But dollars is the actual in-game currency. Oh, nice. The game seems to be very open world. Yeah. Doing it. Pretty boring quest to start your adventure in Gotham City, has to be said. That's a nice police car, isn't it? I'm not overly impressed so far, I'm not going to lie. There it is, now we're level 4, hype. So the talent system seems to be very similar to the old World of Warcraft talent system. Yeah, we're doing it. This is kind of cool, like a running course. Oh, fuck! Ah, oh, that was platinum? That's pretty good, isn't it? Find the bat signal in East Gotham. I didn't I didn't see it. Oh. Oh, there it is. There's the bat signal. Hello. Travel to the abandoned construction site in the East End. So we bring up the map. 
Oh, this map is utterly fucking useless. Looking for a construction site, that could be fucking anywhere. It says reach the crime scene. If this isn't a crime scene, I don't know what the fuck is. There seems to be quite a lot of players running around and there's not enough quest objectives to really go around. It feels like we're all fighting over the same mobs. There it is, level five. Okay, let's jump right from the top of this high building. And just free fall. What happens? Do we die or do we live? Nice. Yes, the quest log go. actually seems to be helping me now. It's telling me the general area, which is much better. At least there's some form of guidance now. Three. Oh shit, what the fuck's that? Tormentor. Big giant thing. Spooky, man. He just picked up a lorry. Double jump here. Climb, fire, peon. Climb. Fly. Flying through the night. Superhero delight. What's this? It seems as though every quest I need to defeat Scarecrow's thugs every single time. It's just repeating the same thing over and over again. Uh, one more patient to help. There we go. Level six. Hype. Okay, the questing's picking up a bit. Help Batwoman defeat and arrest Scarecrow. Okay. When you're in buildings like this, the frame rate is absolutely perfect. It's so smooth. I think this is a game you can play on really low-end computers and get a really nice performance. It does w it does run really well. Fucking 180 frames per second. What is this witchcraft? Edward and Eddie. Okay, these guys look freaky, don't they? This is something I just realized, but when I picked my color scheme for my character, all of the armor that drops is suited to my color scheme, which I picked at the start. Took me a while to notice that, but that's kind of cool. Oh my god, dude, you need to brush your teeth. Batwoman, rip. I see why they call him Scarecrow now. Kick the croc. Kick the croc. Everybody loves to kick the croc. We're doing it, Batwoman, me and you. Whoa! It's about time you die. Considering it's the start of the game, this is a really impressive fight scene. Oh, we arrested him, we didn't kill him. Surely you'd just kill him. He has massacred so many people. There it is, little cinematic. You belong at Arkham Asylum, friend. There we go, we did it. That was fun, I enjoyed that quest chain. Go to the East Police Station to continue your mission. I wonder if the world has kind of changed and adapted to my story progression. That'd be cool. The parkour is real. I was looking for a first person feature in this game just so I can admire the finer details. This game doesn't seem to have it. So you can't just zoom your character all the way in and look at stuff, which sucks. Really lame for creating screenshots. It feels like the game's starting to pick up in pace quite a bit now with the questing. It's actually starting to get interesting. So this is a bit more like it. It's way less grindy than the initial quests. The combat system seems to work well the way you just automatically lock onto targets. It makes target switching really easy. Kill them! Kill them all! Smash all the things, dude. I think I made a wise choice in picking my class. Boom, this should be level 7. Hype. Stuns the enemy with a powerful kick to the head. Sounds good. Whoa, that was a lot of XP. Something this game hasn't done at all so far is try and shove microtransactions down my throat. I don't think the game has even mentioned it, which is surprising considering it's a free-to-play game. And that's often what I expect from free-to-play MMOs. But this game doesn't seem to be trying to sell me shit, which is nice. I appreciate that. Prime Alley. What an inventive name for an alleyway. Where's the in-game no shop? Oh, here it is. Here's the marketplace. Here, it's really not obvious. It hasn't even felt like a free-to-play game so far. This game can get away with fucking physics because, you know, superheroes. I wonder if I can swim in this game. Let's try it. To the sea! Wait, what? You just walk on water? Walking on water! My superhero! is also Jesus Christ. So is this here the whole world of the game? That's what I want to know. Oh nice, your character can actually swim. But if you go travel mode, he just walks on water. Okay, it looks like our next boss is gonna be Bane eventually. My character feels really powerful now. Okay, complete that one. We get some shoulder guards. Hype. These samples are a weaker version of Fuck yeah, everyone loves shoulder pads. There it is. To be honest, why would you be a criminal when a lot of people have turned into superheroes? It's not really going to be a winning fight, is it? Logically. There we go. We are tearing it up right now. This game is getting a lot more fun. 
It starts off a bit slow once you enter Gotham City, but then it gets a lot better. And then you start getting used to the combat, getting used to the combos. The game gives you a really big inventory as a free player. You can expand it by spending money, but I don't really see why you'd need to. I haven't felt as though I've been playing inventory Tetris and having to sort it out all the time. I feel like Sony Online Entertainment are really fair in making free-to-play games. They've made Planet Side 2, which is really good for free players. They've made this, seems to be really good for free players. Seems to be a really solid company for making free-to-play games. Venom Supplier, we gotta take out this guy. Hello friend. There we go, arrest him. You're getting arrested, bro. I do feel as though a lot of the time I am fighting with other players to get to mobs first. Getting a bit crazy up in here. The frame rate is delicious, though. Wow! That's awesome. I just unlocked a new ability which allows me to fly and just glide across the city. And I can just do it as long as I want. That is awesome. Defeat and arrest Bane. We're going after Bane, boys. Feels good to be able to just fly over Gotham. I like it. So now I'm basically Spider-Man as well. Look at this, guys. I'm basically Spider-Man. I'm Superman and I'm Spider-Man. Yes! That is what I want. I have got all the superhero powers right now. I get $9 for killing Bane. Are you kidding me? So this is something what this game has with its transmog system. Basically, as soon as you've collected a piece of armor, it's saved in the styles tab. And you can just change it up on the go, which is nice. Very nice feature. I think World of Warcraft is stealing this idea in the next expansion. All right, let's go take Bane down. Yeah, this game's getting really fun. The more abilities you get and stuff, the further you get into it. You start getting investors into the storyline. You get used to the combat system and the game actually does become fun. It's got quite a few new features. I wasn't enjoying the game too much at first, but the more I'm playing it, the more I am starting to enjoy it. And the fact that it runs so fucking smoothly is really nice. Granted, the graphics are not amazing. Boom. Complete all of the Gang War story arc missions. Nice. I'm really happy with the build I made when I started. I think it was a really good choice. Fire and martial arts. Yes, please. Oh, hello there. Can I just do that in combat? Yes, I can. That is awesome. I can do this in combat. Is that you, Bane? Hello there. You shouldn't have come to our town, UPS man. Watch for debris. Oh, I okay, guess is cool. There we go. That's Bane under arrest. It seems as though every time you defeat one of these major criminals, then you get a little cinematic like this. J. Complete door. 2,533 XP. Damn. I have to admit, my character is a bit of a douchebag, just the way he stands around grooving out. Would you like to use the radar enhancer to reveal gathering nodes on your minimap? Yes. Yes, I would. There we go. Very clean. That grill. So up here, we can look down on the earth. Some kind of space station. Awesome. Yeah, this is the in-game auction house. It seems very similar to the World of Warcraft one, so it's very familiar. Okay, so this has some kind of reputation system. Oh my god, it's Spider-Man! Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Is that the Incredible Hulk? Looks like it. It's Hulk. He looks exactly like the Incredible Hulk. Wow. This is weird. I've been playing the game for like a few hours now and it seems that it's dropping another kind of beginner tutorial on me. Sweet. I think we've found dungeons. Let's queue. So to do the dungeons, it seems as though you need to select a Legends character. Most of them are locked and a lot of them you can unlock with real money. But there's a few of them you can unlock as a free player. I'm going to be Batman. My choices are Green Arrow or Batman, so I'm just going to be Batman. Nice, we got our instance, Area 51, let's do it. Whoa, is everyone scaled up in levels? So in this group, we've got a level 9, a level 10, a level 14, and a level 62. So that leads me to believe that scaling is a pretty big thing in this game. I think this is definitely one of those games where the more you play it, the more fun it becomes. Definitely. The combat is surprisingly fun. Oh, I'm the tank, apparently. I thought I signed up as damage, apparently I signed up as tank. That is a damn cool superhero, whatever this person is. Lots of weapons and stuff. What a badass. That person killed it already, that person's an absolute beast. It just feels very fast paced. For a 2011 game, this was really ahead of its time when it comes to the combat system. Give me those heals, give me those heals, give me those heals. 
Is this person literally just going around one hitting everything? Maybe the levels aren't scaled. This person seems ridiculously powerful. This game runs so well in dungeons though, it's so smooth. Any dungeon or encounter, it's absolutely brilliant. Frame rate, fuck! Got the clutch heal. This is a boss. Whether or not I can actually tank him is another- What the fuck, dude? I actually don't think scaling is a thing because this person just one hit a boss. Why would it group a level 62 with a bunch of like level 10s? Well, I could have got more of an accurate impression of what the dungeons are actually like if we didn't have a level 63 automatically group with us and carry us. Cool, let's see what we get for this. We got a really big upgrade here. Oh my god, we got so many upgrades. I'm guessing Legends PvP is just ranked. I like these little race things. This is a great idea for this game. Come on! Come on! PvP boys. Whoa, someone's level 96. No idea what the level cap is in this game. I hope the PvP is scaled. Fuck. Not looking too hot for me right now. This guy's level 114. Okay. We are literally getting spawn camp. Are you fucking kidding me? This is fucking ridiculous, dude. They're just standing here spawn camping us. This is fucking stupid, dude. I'm getting killed in seconds. The PvP doesn't seem to be scaled. Oh, we got a kill. Shit, son. There's got to be something weird going on here. I don't think the PvP is scaled. It can't be. There's no way you can do 727,385 damage in about two minutes without with the levels being scaled. Does DCUO have level scaling? Are you fucking kidding me? This game doesn't have level scaling. That is so bad. Sometimes there's quests like this which just do not fucking appear on the map. So you have to randomly fly around the city See where the fuck you need to go. Go to the Midnight Masquerade to continue your mission. I would fucking love to if you marked it on the map somewhere so I had some fucking idea where it could possibly be. Okay, guys, I feel like I've played enough of DC Universe Online to get a decent enough first impressions of it. So as always, first we're going to talk about the pros, then we're going to talk about the cons, the good things and the bad things. Right off the bat, the intro cinematic makes sense and puts things into context even for people that aren't familiar with the DC Universe, such as myself. This really helped as I was worried I was going to go into this game and not have a clue what was going on. Sure, I know the main characters like Batman, Superman, the Joker, but there's a lot of them that I didn't really know of and it doesn't really matter. The superhero creation is fantastic and it really impressed me. There's so many different combinations of abilities and skins and stuff that you can have that it really makes the idea of leveling another character, an alt, not seem that bad. It feels like the game could have a decent amount of replayability. Due to the way the movement and combat works, the game feels really fast paced, especially in dungeons. I like this. The action combat system of this game really impressed me and works well. I was really surprised how good it was considering it was released in 2011 and action combat wasn't really a huge thing back then. It's just fun flying, jumping, wall running and using your character's movement abilities to get around the city. The questing becomes interesting when you get to fight well-known villains from the franchise. You'll start off with a few small missions to learn of their whereabouts and you'll go in and kick their ass, dealing with some interesting mechanics for each encounter. DC Universe Online has a fantastic transmog system where it saves every Every single piece of armor that you've ever had. Starting the game you quickly gain new abilities to keep things interesting and you can really feel the game becoming a lot more fun as you level up. There's a lot of content to catch up on if you're a new player in terms of PvE and PvP and it's all accessible via a group finder which feels really familiar if you've played any other MMO. Actually getting to fight alongside well-known heroes and villains from the DC universe feels really cool. Fans of DC will love this game. The game runs really smoothly once you've disabled V-Sync and I'm pretty sure this will run really well on low-end PCs. It feels open world, it's not a heavily instanced MMO like we see a lot of nowadays. This makes exploration feel fun and worthwhile. For a free-to-play game, it doesn't try and shove microtransactions down your throat. It seems like it has a pretty fair business model and from the research I've done it doesn't seem to be pay to win. 
So now we're going to talk about the cons. This game has very limited options in terms of graphics. There's no windowed borderless mode and apparently that's due to an issue with the game's engine not supporting it for some reason. And by default V-Sync is enabled which will lock your FPS to 30. Disable this straight away. The UI isn't very good and it's not very customizable. I tried to find a way of making it a little bit smaller in terms of scale. But I couldn't see any options that would allow me to do that and I tried to look online and again no answers there so. The community of DCU online is known for being really toxic and throughout my playing I saw lots of arguments in chat. It just made me not really want to ask questions as a new player. Sometimes you'll come across quests which will ask you to go to a certain location. However that location will not be marked on the map. This means you either need to go for a tedious search to find it or look online for the location. I really think the quest tracking needs a lot of work. In dungeons you can be grouped with high level players that will just one shot everything and carry the group. Their level isn't scaled down and your level isn't scaled up. It kind of feels like cheating because you're beating content with absolutely no challenge. It kind of reminds me of being boosted for a dungeon by a friend in WoW but DCU's group finder actually allows for this? It's fucking weird. You can access PvP at level 10, however you'll get absolutely stomped by high level players that'll kill you in less than a second. There doesn't seem to be separate PvP brackets based on level, and there seems to be absolutely no scaling technology implemented whatsoever to keep things balanced. Really didn't enjoy the PvP, was really disappointed with that because most games seem to have some kind of PvP scaling tech. It's not a very good looking MMO and this will probably put off a lot of players that are really into their graphics. However, to be fair, the game was released in 2011 and it still looks better than quite a few newer MMOs that I've tried recently. Overall, DC Universe Online seems like a fairly decent game. When I first arrived in Gotham, I wasn't having an amazing time with the initial few quests. But as I gained more abilities and started fighting recognisable villains, the game started to become a lot more enjoyable, fun and compelling. I'm not really too sure if this is the game for me because I'm not really a huge superhero fan. And to be honest, the game's still missing quite a few things which I really think it should have and it kind of annoys me. Such as windowed borderless mode, first person view, scalable UI and level scaling. Regardless though, I do think this is an MMO worth checking out if you're a fan of superheroes and DC. The worst thing that could happen is you could get a few hours of free fun. So that's it for this video guys. If you've played DC Universe Online, then please share your thoughts on the game in the comments below. And maybe give us an insight into what Endgame's actually like, because this was just a first impressions. If you're new to the channel, then please check out my other first impressions, and if you enjoy the format, then maybe subscribe. I do MMORPGs, FPS, survival games, and I'm branching out into pretty much anything I really feel like playing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, you take it easy and I'll see you again really soon. The game just fucking feels unfinished! Fucking combat system is so sluggish and shit! So I just needed to run up to it. Now I need to kill it, okay. This game's fucking stupid, dude. This is the point where I'd fucking turn it off.